Welcome to the Roboticist Chronicles, an ARC Specialties podcast, where we get into the nuts and bolts of robots, automation, and the implications of an evolving machine workforce. Hello, this is Dan Alford, and you're listening to the Roboticist Chronicles podcast. Today we're going to talk about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There's many things in your life that you can't control and you can't change where you're born, who your parents were, and up until recently, even your gender. But there is one thing that you have absolute control over and no one else has any control over. And what I've found is this, this thing is critical to your happiness, your well-being, and your competitiveness at work. And I'm talking about fitness. So to talk about this subject, I brought in a special guest. Today we have Jean-Marc Tetevi. Welcome to the show. Thank you for getting me. Um, I know I'm, I wasn't always a model in fitness, and uh, I'm still not, but uh, uh, it took me 20 years to understand that uh, fitness was, uh, was an important part of life and uh, healthy habits uh, was that. And that's, that's why we brought you on, because you and I came at this from entirely different perspectives, but it's both wor- you know, it's working for both of us, and we're now training partners. So uh, I, th- I thought that it, we could share some ideas, and maybe some of your techniques work for some of our audience, some of mine will work for some people, and uh, we're going to go from there. But first, let's start off. How did you get this outrageous speech impediment? Oh, um, I think that was, like you say, you, you don't choose your parents, you don't choose where you're born, and uh, yeah. I, I spent uh, way too much time, maybe, but uh, so I grew up in France, um, and uh, I'm told that uh, once you pass uh, 18 and uh, you you raise the speaking uh, French, there's no way you're gonna lose that uh, speech impediment. And uh, you and I uh, agreed that instead of calling it an accent, it's a speech speech impediment. That way, if anybody uh, picks on me, I can uh, claim some sort of. Uh, lawsuit or something good idea but in, 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 uh, in uh, your day job the way we know each other is i always tell people you need a tribologist on speed dial and if you don't if the audience doesn't know what a tribologist is that means you definitely need a tribologist on speed dial <laughs> so what do you do for a living just a little background uh so uh i focus on uh, a lot of welding consumable uh, around uh, wear protection so weld uh, mostly weld overlays that are well on top of uh, heavy uh, equipment oil drilling equipment to uh, increase their life uh, and uh, eventually repair and rebuild them and resend them to where they're coming from to do good work so uh, increasing life with uh, tanks and carbide diamonds and that's uh, very often you've been involved in uh, processing and uh, on the process and the equipment side. Uh, so that's how we got to know each other. All right, my, my machines need these composite carbide, diamond, cobalt, nickel, silicon matrix products. And so that, that's how we cooperate. Just, I just want everybody to have a little background there. So, but uh, one of my mentors, uh, he's passed away now, his name was Rick Garza. And uh, Rick was kind of uh, my role model for fitness. Rick was an expert witness. One of the last cases he worked on was with T. Boone Pickens. They got a huge settlement. And I I still remember Rick telling me that as the days in court wore on, he was still operating at full speed, full capacity when most of the other people in the courtroom were starting to slow down and drag. And that, that really left an impression on me. And so that's now one of the many reasons that I train. And I thought that would be, you know, I, I'm sure it, it happens in your business too. Yeah, sometimes you, I mean, you, you have to do a little bit of everything. Uh, I'm always been working for a smaller, smaller companies. So one day you're, you're in, the, in an office, another day you're in the shop, you, you're sweating, you're on the road and uh, um, all those situations where you're sitting and not moving a lot, uh, and then the next uh, you you have to do something uh, with your hands and standing on your feet. Uh, if you let your your fitness go, that that will uh, that will catch up with you. And it's so easy to correct this problem. You know, for me, I've you know I'm I'm, I'm no athlete by any means, but I've I've always been. Uh, training my whole life but for a very different reason I like to compete I race cars bicycles canoes kayaks triathlons and in fact we have a triathlon we're training for right now late in October 
we do yes i'm a little bit behind i think on the on the training and it's going to be my first uh, attempt at something uh, try something uh, but uh, yeah looking forward to it. it's a new challenge and uh, that's been what has been uh, helping me getting focus on uh, on uh, health and fitness in general been getting new challenge and pushing it to to new levels yeah well, for me, I love the competition, and uh, in fact, my daughter and I do triathlons together, and uh, so far she hasn't been able to beat me, you know, but the day, my day is coming, and so that's what motivated me in the beginning, and, and so I guess that's what initially drove me, and then the other key for me is trying to find some activities that I enjoy. I just can't stand weight training. Yeah, no, I, I would agree with you. Um, uh, as, as much as so I, I let uh, like a lot of people you know you get married you you don't move a lot and you get caught in that uh, more work less sleep more eating and uh, so taking clients out to dinner uh, exactly and uh, 20 years of doing that and uh, uh, at first you know you're, you're young and it doesn't matter you're catching up and then you're not so young and all <laughs> of a sudden it's catching up with you and you, you get into thinking that oh that's it I'm gonna be big and fat all my life and uh, and uh, you, you can't do anything about it and I decided at one point that yes I wanted to do something about it uh, I th even thought about surgical option and I'm like no that's cheating you know that's that, cheating. that doesn't make sense uh, if you're cha not changing your, your habits what what's gonna get any better so um, uh, and it worked right you've lost over 100 pounds yeah I lost uh, a lot of weight it's uh, something I have to battle almost daily uh, uh, in and some other thing you have to think when you go in, into a journey and saying oh man I have to lose 100 120 pound actually if we're looking even at uh, good bmi figures uh, at that time i probably had to think 150 plus pounds and uh, it, it seems uh unattainable uh, but yeah it's true what they say i mean you you got to get a little bit of discipline you're gonna get a little bit of uh, uh, ev a little bit every day or every week or every month uh, you're gonna have fail and you're gonna have some wins and eventually uh, you you can catch up to it. Well, you put it on slowly, you have to take it off slowly. Exactly. Well, for me, so uh, since I don't like pumping iron, uh, running, bike riding, and boating, and out of that, uh, two of the three you and I do every week. We paddle every Tuesday, yeah. six miles or so on the, the Buffalo Bayou, which is, if you go down far enough, is the ship channel. Uh, and then on Thursdays, that's that's tonight. That's tonight. You know, uh, we're gonna get in at least 20 miles on the bicycles. Yeah, and, and uh, think about where we, when I, where I was when we started. I mean, you were, you were trying to uh, accommodate uh, slow speed and low mileage, and uh, now we're enjoying it and getting a little uh, uh, malted beverage after that, and we deserve it. Uh, so yeah, we, we're doing good, I think, and uh, I've caught up on doing more biking on my own. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a reality. There's two things that drive us. It's we're, we picked activities that, that that we enjoy and fellowship, and I think that's so key to training. You need a training partner. Yes. And so uh, that's something you need to look for. Fortunately, I've, you know, Gary paddles with us on Tuesday, and then and then we've got a couple folks that'll ride with us on Thursdays on occasion. On occasion, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, uh, I think uh, it's it's not necessarily a, a pure competitiveness, but uh, it's good to have somebody reminding you. Yes, uh, you always want to. Uh, I, and every time I've been doing a, a bike ride, it's funny. My body wants to stop ten miles before the uh, the finish line, whether it's a, a thirty mile finish line or a hundred mile finish line. It's always that those last. 10% nobody wants to do them uh, and and I think training is the same same thing uh, even today I'm doing better but uh, if I'm traveling uh, going into a, a, a weight room in a hotel in a hotel uh, I, I just can't do it I, I need uh, yeah I need the fellowship I need I need people to say hey, look I he can do it I can do it 
oh, I can do probably at least half of what he's doing. So you, you're pushing yourself, yeah. And the ice chest full of beer at the end of the ride. And there's that, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I used to have a couple of running partners, but uh, both of them got atrial fibrillation. So now I'm short of short running partners, but now I've got my dog. So anytime I don't get up in the morning and run, she gives me the look. So, you know, even even a dog will help motivate you is in my case. So. Yeah. Uh, one one thing that works for me also is, uh, you know, they say um, uh, I've I've talked to coaches. I've talked to uh, I mean, I've got people training with me uh, when when I do several uh, different activities but uh, for me discipline uh, trunks motivation so uh, this day you're motivated this day you're not motivated even the day you're not motivated uh, if you do something it's better than not doing anything Oh, I could have slept in this morning instead I got up early and ran and I guarantee you that sleeping in wouldn't have been as satisfying as as running so you know it, doesn't feel that way you yeah. know, when the alarm goes off before dawn, but uh, but you know after a while you start to believe and, and then you follow this example. So I'm going to talk about nutrition because you you know you had an entirely different task ahead of you. You needed to drop a lot of weight. I actually managed to lose some weight over COVID, uh, but nothing you know nothing like what you did. But uh, so the way I'm doing it is I try to avoid processed foods which seem to have a higher caloric content and but mostly I'm just trying to drop the total quantity of food don't fill your plate what's your trick uh, that that that's uh, that's the key because uh, when you're trying to lose uh, whether it's 20 pound or 100 pound um, unless you're a professional athlete there's no way you're gonna lose weight strictly on exercising uh, and that's what uh, early on uh, my doctor told me when I started to, to lose pound, he was like, hey, it's, it's a very simple rule. Uh, a pound is 3,500 calories. Uh, you cannot uh, consider that you're gonna lose, you're gonna burn 40,000 uh, calories, let's say uh, like 10 pound, 15 pound, by strictly exercising uh, without changing something in your in your habits first uh, that would be a lot of hours spent running biking something so you, you have to change something you have to to drop the calorie intakes uh, for me uh, the first thing uh, I dropped a lot of uh, processed food a lot uh, I dropped all the sodas back in 2017 I can probably count on one hand the number of sodas I've had since then. Um, at the beginning, I eliminated a lot of uh, uh, processed food, pizzas, bready uh, things, and eventually I reduced the, uh, the food intakes. And we, we focused on usually, yeah, fresh product and, uh, and better food. I haven't set food in a, in a fast food same thing i can probably count that on one hand in the last five years mm. very easy to avoid and um it's not creating any any uh lack in anything i'm doing no actually uh my friends in ecuador call it eating close to the earth yeah and uh that's, that's not making a sacrifice that's eating good food all right hey um uh, I think all my personal days of personal records are over. I don't, my six and a half minute miles are gone. My sub two hour half marathons are gone. So I'm focused on a new set of metrics now. I, I now look at heart rate recovery, resting heart rate, body mass index, uh, heart rate variability. Do you, uh, what are your metrics? Uh, so the interesting part is uh, when I was uh, starting to lose weight, it's it's very slow. So if you're only focusing on the weight, it's very discouraging very fast. Uh, so uh, when I was in the 350, 360 pound, uh, my resting heart rate was high. My blood pressure was high. I was taking uh, medication for cholesterol, for uh, blood pressure. Uh, but one one first metric that changed very very fast, and I'm talking uh, in a matter of few few weeks, 
was uh, resting heart rate. And uh, that resting heart rate is also what helps you from being able to climb, stay, or walk, uh, not just not just run. Uh, because it gives you an opportunity to respond absolutely. to increased effort. Whereas yeah. if your heart's already racing, you have no place to go. You have no place to go. So uh, you end up uh, at that time uh, climbing a flight of stairs, uh, walking uh, in, a, in the summer in Houston in a parking lot. And that was almost uh, feeling like uh, I was done for the day. So those, those are the kind of thing uh, you start up with. And as those metrics improve, now you can focus on additional metrics. Uh, uh, I, I was fortunate to not uh, set up a high hand record like you when I was uh, young, so now I can <laughs> only beat mine. Uh, but yes, uh, now when it comes to those additional metrics, uh, um, uh, recovery, uh, I'm still discovering those but uh, uh, they're good ones. And, and, and you're too kind to point this out, but uh, when we first started riding, I could lap you multiple times in an hour on a one mile loop. And the last time we did a time trial, as I recall, the, the lapper got lapped. So uh, you, you've done well, you've, uh, you've, beaten the, you've beaten the teacher, so. That was a good feeling, but uh, I think, uh, I remember the first time we were, we were riding, yeah, you, I was trying to, to, to ride and push on the pedal as hard as I could, and I was thinking I was doing it, and yet uh, you were uh, not having your hands on the on the bike. Sometimes you didn't even have your feet on the bike, and you were still beating me. So that was a little uh, insulting. But instead of uh, uh, pushing you off the bike, I decided <laughs> to kick myself and try to to get there. Yes. And now I'm chasing you. Uh, so, some days, he, uh, I, st I still think uh, I like the, the accountability you have rather than just beating you on a couple of things. But it, it's getting there, and it's fun to do it. Oh, absolutely. A little competition well, it improves the breed, right? Yes. So, uh, and sometimes we, uh, I mean, we, we go on that, uh, tra on that trail, and we got some, uh, some people, same thing, they lap us once or twice, uh, but uh, eventually uh, they're not. They're not getting the distance, and I think usually we're, we're doing pretty good. Indeed, but uh, but I'm not above cheating. So at this next triathlon, I uh, I'm I'm taking an Olympic racing boat, and you're taking a, a whitewater boat. So I think that might give me a decided advantage. But yeah, I think you. I mean, I have the the running to figure out, and uh, yeah, on those distance, I think uh, best case scenario, I'm gonna take 30 seconds on you on the bike, and I'm gonna lose 30 minutes on the running. So uh, and you'll. You are a much better boater, so uh, I'm uh, I'm trying to go for uh, not drowning and not uh, not swimming too much. Hmm. Well, I just I, don't, I just want to beat you and my daughter, so that's that's my goal. So I guess if I went back and and, and uh, could give advice to my younger self, I would uh, uh, encourage myself to keep running, biking, boating, and all this stuff uh, for the fact that it was going to make my uh, golden years uh, a whole lot more fun I mean uh, my quality of life is much better since I'm able to hike bike run and everything else uh, I have a lot of friends that uh, that are incapable of this I, and uh, a lot of it is lifestyle dependent so that, that's what I would tell myself is uh, hang in there keep training what would you tell little Jean Marc yeah that's uh, definitely uh, uh, I mean I grew up uh, I really enjoy uh, playing sports. I was in more into uh, team sports, uh, but it's easy to lose track, especially team sports. You know, you, you get to a point where you can't compete with a with a young kid, so it's easy to decide not to do it. But some do. Uh, but yes, uh, not only keep track of uh, of your fitness, uh, but there's also a lot of other things that are becoming important, and we learn that much later. Um, recovery is a good one too. Uh, sleep is becoming something very important and it's only discovered now. Um, too much I think we, we're putting uh, on a pedestal people who function without sleep or with very little sleep uh, but there's actually very few people who can uh, function and be efficient uh, with that little sleep. Um, 
So I think there's a lot more study uh, now that shows uh, there's thing happening in our fitness, in our health during sleep that we should try to uh, promote even at least uh, once in a while. Oh yeah, uh, society has me feeling guilty that I enjoy eight hours of sleep, but uh, but I do. And uh, I, I think that in the end, I think you're right, Will, people will find that that's a key feature. I've, I've heard some doctors saying that that's one thing they wish their parent, their uh, patients could get was a, a good night's sleep. So apparently that's one of the keys. So you're probably onto something there. Yeah, a um, few things like that. And uh, that lack of sleep, uh, when you look at uh, all your metrics, uh, it adds up to uh, all those uh, all those things. Uh, being able to progress on your fitness without the recovery is very, very tough. So I'm going to, uh, can I draw this conclusion? Since you were a team guy and I was a solo guy, uh, as you grow older, uh, it's harder to find a team to play with, but the solo stuff that I do, which is running, biking, boating, uh, it, it facilitated me continuing to train. So, and, and I've always felt like running is like the perfect exercise because I can do it when I'm traveling. I can do it in any city. I can do it without any equipment. I, I think you're... You're right on it. I mean, uh, it's not easy to get back on it. Uh, I'm discovering that now. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to just start something. But uh, yes, the running is something, yeah, you can do any anywhere. Um, I, I've started to travel with uh, uh, some of those uh, uh, elastic band to do resistance exercise. And same, same uh, doctors that are uh, showing what the new trend they, they recommend when you when you get into your 50s uh, to implement some sort of resistance training at least two or three times a week and it doesn't have to be weight it doesn't have to be heavy it's some resistance training so that you maintain your muscle mass and uh, muscle mass is a key of keeping your joints in uh, in a good shape when you when you get older yeah well, you know, I'm a, I'm the poster child for injury. I have uh, seven broken bones. Uh, they they call it severe arthritis and torn meniscus. But I treat all of this without surgery, with nothing but exercise. I simply modify the exercise. If it hurts, I quit doing it, and I I try to run something else. But I've I've surprised my orthopedic surgeon by working through my uh, arthritis in my knee and my torn meniscus was strictly exercise rather than surgery. So what do they say? Yeah, motion is the lotion. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very easy uh, as you get into your, uh, into your 70s. Uh, we hear a lot of, uh, I mean, I've got example in, in my family of uh, people uh, falling, breaking, breaking a bone and not really recovering ever from for it and and so that uh, maintaining your muscle mass is preventing you from uh, further injuries and uh, joints uh, uh, don't like to be uh, to be messed up with uh, so you lose mobility and uh, and it goes down pretty fast it's an ugly spiral yep all right, so we got to the same place through very different paths, but it's working for us. And I, 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 I tell you, like I said, it improves my quality of life, and I think it makes me more competitive at work. So, uh, it 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 does. Uh, I don't I don't know if it's what motivates the competitiveness because I've always had it. Uh, you know, you 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 run business, and I don't like losing, especially in sales. It's uh, it's difficult as much uh, as much as you want to. Uh, uh, to think that hey, uh, there's something to learn when you when you lose uh, an order, but you don't like to. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing, uh, same thing in uh, in sports. I mean, uh, I think uh, when we when we do things together, I like to challenge myself more than challenging. Just looking at uh, who else is out there, uh, but I like uh, I like to try to beat what I was doing last week or last month or yesterday. Well, you know, I, I train with a lot of people younger than me. You're, you're 10 years, 10 years younger than I am, yeah. you know, and, and it's, it's actually quite a joy for me when, when, the, when you youngsters do beat me and it's inevitable. So, uh, you know, but I, I enjoy the race. I enjoy the competition in the meantime and, and uh, I'm going to try to keep up with you. 
thank you. I'm still a little bit behind, so I'm. Uh, but you, you've been uh, very inspiring. Uh, I mean, the, the the kayak is something I always say. Hey, I would like to do it. I like to do it. But same thing. If you, if you like to do it, try to find a, a path. Uh, uh, and I think COVID is what uh, made it happen. Uh, but it's easy. I mean, here in Houston, you know, we're every week you and I are running biking and boating you know we have a, a wonderful resource in in the form of Buffalo Bayou and yet we've been paddling together for three years and how many times have we seen anyone else on the bayou I don't never actually remember never, yeah. you know and so nobody appreciates the the resource we have here so and it's cheap I mean we're you know have $200 kayak I got a hundred dollar pair of running shoes and uh so there's really no excuse for not getting into shape. And that, that, that's the point of our podcast today, just to see if we can convince a few people to, to, to come paddle with us on Tuesday, come ride with us on Thursday, or, or run with me and the, the German Shepherd in the mornings. Free beer on Thursday. I hope uh, we, I mean, I hope we run out of beer someday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're supposed to head to the park. Yes, I think it's time because uh, uh, if we let it go, it's not gonna happen. Don't skip your exercising. You're only punishing yourself. Yes. Thanks for joining us today, and we're going to have you back on again. Thank you.